This video is brought to you by Sun King Discs. Go to sunkingdiscs.com for a full selection of disc golf merchandise from all the major brands. What's up everybody? Welcome to my review of the Discraft ESP Rattler. Big thank you to Sun King Discs for sponsoring this video. You can go to sunkingdiscs.com to check out the website or just go straight to the description. You'll find a link right to these Rattlers on Sun King's website if you want to order some for yourself. It's a very unique disc that I was uh, interested to check out and just add to my playlist. I like to occasionally kind of add in some stuff that you guys might not be uh, paying much attention to, might not be on your radar, and just try stuff that I'm curious about at times as well just to uh, keep it fresh rather than just constantly reviewing the newest exciting high-speed driver or whatever it is that's out there on the market. So the Rattler is a very old-school disc. It's basically like a tiny Ultimate Disc is what it looks like. I will be comparing it to an Ultimate Disc um, in just a little while. But yeah, it's got a very, very uh, unique feel in the hand compared to most golf discs. And it's a very old mold. I'm not exactly sure how old it is. Um, I will look that up and I'll add it onto the screen in post-production so you guys can know when this disc was actually PDGA approved. I first heard about the Rattler um, in an old, old video on the Discraft uh, YouTube channel featuring Mark Ellis, Paul Ulibarri when he was like 16 or something like that, Ron Russell, and I uh, forget the other gentleman that was on that video, but uh, they were talking about longer putts and one of the discs that uh, and approaches that they were using in that time, Mark Ellis would basically switch to a Rattler and throw it at the basket with like an old school air bounce frisbee toss at the basket. Super old school, interesting stuff that you guys should definitely check out. Just look for the old Discraft clinic on making long range putts. You can see Ron Russell and Yuli and stuff. It's pretty great. Um, and that was my first introduction to this disc, and I basically never threw one or had any experience with them whatsoever beyond that. I did um, purchase a couple of these years ago now, maybe two years ago, with the intention of taking these Pro D Rattlers out and having a uh, one disc round battle with Andy or whoever. Uh, I think Andy was definitely the intention um, on like a short course and throw these around since they are, yeah, very unique, basically small ultimate disc, catch discs more or less. Um, but I have not thrown these yet at all. So unfortunately I can't really bring any of the information with the way these fly compared to the ESPs to this, to this review because these are still brand new and uh, kind of on the sidelines in case we ever get the chance to make that video happen. But I do have two of these laying around because of that. Uh, I did very recently review the Opto Bite, so you can check that out if you're interested. I'll put that up next to the, uh, the Rattler in just a second. First of all, let's take a look at these particular ones. So, 2020 Memorial Championships on the uh, bottom stamp here. Also, I'll say ESP and Dan Ginley. Dan, I'm really sorry. No disrespect meant. I did not do the research to find out much about this gentleman. Uh, I definitely probably should have done that. Um, you guys maybe would like to hear more of that information let me know let me know do you want any of that kind of stuff in the video do you care about background and stuff or you just want to see the disc fly and see how it looks i, I don't really know but uh I don't think you guys would mind too much either way, but I gotta be perfectly honest, I did not do any research to figure out much about Dan, but his name's on the bottom of these 2020 bottom stamp kind of tour series ESP Rattlers. They are swirly ESP plastic, although they definitely uh, look very similar. I don't know why the, my camera's having trouble focusing on these. Very strange. Hopefully that'll be a little better in a second. But uh, you can see it's got the swirls going on and it's ESP plastic technically, these feel very different. I don't know what they have to really change to get these to, to feel, um, maybe they need to change the blend slightly to get them to mold up because it's such a strange little catch disc shape to it. I'm not really sure. Um, but ultimately, yeah, they, they don't feel quite as good as ESP normally does. They're a little bit more slick. They're a little stiffer. There's not much flexibility to it at all, um, which is interesting but no real problem to it. I'm sure it'll feel a little bit better over time. This newer blend of ESP in general seems to get grippier um, as you use it, so I'm sure these would break in a little bit and, uh, and get some of that. So one of the benefits of having a disc like this in this plastic is that it's a pretty understable disc to begin with, so uh, in that way, you can actually get these to hold up that to that brand new off-the-shelf flight, uh, flight path for much longer than, uh, say, a Pro-D one, of course, which would break in very quickly and start changing its flight pretty much straight away. 
So definitely an interesting feel. The, the plastic isn't my favorite. I, I actually really like the feel of the, the Pro D on that particular one. It feels grippier to me. But again, the durability difference is going to be enormous. So if you want to throw a disc like this or maybe like a Sonic or something like that, um, a lot of people like them in the premium plastic. I also, I'm not really sure, but I know Sonics have a tendency to break. I'm not sure if the Rattler has that issue or not, but this one and this plastic shouldn't be much of a problem. So let's take a look at the design again. As you can see, just like a small Ultimate Disc, catch disc shape. These are both uh, max weight, 175 or so. They are not very large diameter. Um, like if you see the bite, the bike can actually take the uh, the Rattler inside of it. And you could throw these both together, which is pretty interesting. And I've done that. You can see that in the uh, bite review. I've thrown it with other discs inside of it. And they come out and kind of split apart at some point, which is pretty fun. But uh, that's a little bit unfortunate that these are so small because they're pretty deep, as you can see. So they'll take up a pretty good chunk of space in your bag based on that. So let's put it up next to the bite real quick just so you can see very different the bite has a little bit more of a golf design to it where this little indentation here it's also got that this huge protruding um flight plate on the top it's got the thumb track in here as well it's got all this textured writing it's very different but they don't fly super different the bite is flippier and tougher to control but this one's also uh low weight they're all like 150 or so so that's probably part of that equation the most similar thing you're going to see is uh, something like this, which is an a Ultimate Disc, and this is an Aviator from DD. Let's put it up next to the Aviator, and you can see in terms of design, that's basically what you're looking at. Uh, it's just a, a tiny version of that. Here it is to get a sense of the difference in size, with an Ultimate Disc obviously being larger still. Um, but, yeah, there you can see... Um, that's basically how it's designed. Definitely interesting. Not my favorite feel in the hand by any means. It feels a little weird. It takes time to get used to. Um, it doesn't really feel like a golf disc. And, and honestly, it's kind of not a golf disc. It's not beveled edge. It is, uh, it is, but it's a very old school throwback type design that we really don't see anymore. And that's, again, part of why I wanted to actually produce this video and show it off to you guys. So let's get into the flight of this disc. So, not going to lie, these are interesting and kind of uh, strange discs to throw. Uh, they definitely take some getting used to. Um, any kind of more modern disc, by the time I get out there and throw it a few times, I get a feel for it pretty quickly, and I can at least get it to fly without too much issue. I had trouble dialing these in. I had a few throws where they just kind of fell and uh, fell out pretty early. they go out pretty straight, but not get very far at all. And then if you try to power into them, sometimes they start to flip over. And I think that comes from off-axis torque based on that old-school design without the beveled edge. It's a little tougher to dial in. If you get them on the nice uh, release angle and you dial it in, they fly good. But it's not as easy as a modern disc, which is not terribly surprising, uh, honestly, because now we've had 20-plus years of innovation trying to make these discs more accurate and more controllable, more throwable, more overstable, etc., 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 than when this uh, disc was designed. One strange attribute of this disc that kind of caught me off guard is that it's relatively low glide. Yeah, I was expecting that like really flippy, really floaty, ultimate type flight to it, and it really doesn't have it. It will definitely hold that line if you get it up in the air and you give it enough height and stuff. And we're going to see that James and Andy were both able to get better flights, longer distance out of this disc than I was cap capable of getting. And I think it's because of my off-axis torque. Anytime I tried to put power on it, it started to kind of turn over or become more squirrely. I would have to throw it down on a lot of hyzer to get it to fly. But we're able to see James and Andy throw it with much more power, get more distance out of it on different angles, even holding hyzers and stuff. And I was able to get it to hold a hyzer as well. Um, but yeah, it's it was just surprisingly stable and definitely not nearly as glidey and floaty as I was kind of expecting based on the design. I would have to imagine that the Pro D ones are uh, more glidey than these. And I think maybe it's just the, the nature of this ESP blend and the density of it or the stiffness. I'm not exactly sure, but definitely caught me by surprise that it wasn't really a very floaty, flippy flight at all. You can actually put some power behind it. It will hold some hyzer. And uh, yeah, definitely interesting. I found them to be most effective for, by far, is actually putting inside the circle. 
I had no trouble making putts with these during testing. I was basically hitting them straight on the pole with my normal putting form, and they felt really good. They came out of the hand nice, no issues whatsoever, and they felt uh, felt really nice for putting and had took no time to really dial in that type of uh, flight path in my putting form. Just straight in, bang, right on the pole, and they were, they were uh, feeling really nice inside the circle, so I liked that quite a bit. Also, for short range approaches, they're very point and shoot, and you can just kind of throw them a little bit nose up, like you're playing catch and just toss them a disc to your buddy. Um, it's really easy, and it definitely works out quite well. So definitely an interesting disc that took some time to get used to. I think these would be best suited for putting, short range approaching, and honestly, I think the absolute best use for these, other than uh, just being a fan of the Rattler and looking for ones in premium plastic, I think the best use for these is for ultimate players that are coming over to disc golf. These would be a great option for you to check out for your putting and approaching because it has a very similar feel. It might kind of feel like home in terms of the design. Without that bevel edge, there's no bead. There's none of that stuff that might be kind of weird in the hand for an ultimate player or somebody with a freestyle or ultimate background coming into disc golf now. I think that would be basically the perfect uh, person perfect candidate to check out these ESP Rattlers because they're going to be durable and they're going to have a very uh, similar and kind of uh, reminiscent familiar feel to an ultimate or a freestyle disc that you might be experienced with. That is my review on the ESP Rattler. Definitely a very interesting disc that I had a good time uh, getting out there and checking out and I'm happy to add to my playlist. Thank you once again to Sun King Discs for sponsoring this video. You can find the link in the description to go pick these up for yourself or check out all the other great plastic and gear that they have available on the website. Tell them I sent you. Thanks to the Disc Golf Nerd Patreon support team and all of my viewers and subscribers out there. I appreciate you guys and I will talk to you very soon. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching, and big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. If you would like to see your name listed in the credits of all of my videos, go to patreon.com slash discgolfnerd.